in the previous video, we talked about neutralization reactions. And neutralization reactions are commonly used to help determine the concentration of an unknown acid or base in an experiment called a titration. So if you have an acid or base, um, basically what you can do is add a known amount of the other one. So if you don't know how much acid you have, you can add a known amount of base until you neutralize the acid because it undergoes a neutralization reaction. And what happens is, in this titration reaction where you're doing this neutralization, um, you reach what's called the end point of the reaction when you finally neutralize the original amount of acid you had. And at that end point, the number of moles of acid is equal to the number of moles of base. And that's going to be important. So in other words, if we know how much um, base we have to add to neutralize the acid, we say, okay, we know how many moles of base we added. Well, that tells us how many moles of acid had to be there in our unknown that we weren't sure about what the concentration was. If we know how many moles are there, we can then figure out the concentration. So, uh, doing a titration problem requires um, usually, well, it has three steps here. It's three conversions here. There's actually a couple more steps um, that are involved that I'll talk about here on the next slide. So, basically, you can start with the volume of one solution and convert to moles. Here it says volume of base. Um, you could also have volume of acid, and I'll talk about that a little bit on the next one. Don't try to memorize this flowchart too closely. You have to be a little bit flexible in how your brain handles it, depending on if you're trying to determine an unknown acid or whether you're trying to determine an unknown base. So volume of base solution, you can figure out the moles of base. Then you can convert moles of one thing to moles of another using a mole conversion factor. And then once you know the moles of acid here, you can figure out, for instance, the molarity of the solution. Or you could figure out the volume of the solution, depending on um, what it is you know about that solution that you have. So titration problem is going to involve these series um, of conversions in order to get to your final answer. So all that is fine and good, but it really comes down to us solving problems with it. So here's an example. So what is the molarity of an HCl solution if 22.5 milliliters of a 0 0.100 molar sodium hydroxide solution are needed to titrate a 25 milliliter sample of the acid. So the first thing I typically try to tell people to do is just draw a little sketch of what's going on. Um, so in this case you have a 25 milliliter sample of the acid and I'm not an artist at all but that's going to be a flask. So we're going to have um, acid in here and it's going to be 20 5.0 milliliters of that acid that's in there. And then it says, what is the molarity of that solution? So we want to calculate capital M, which is molarity. That's what we don't know. But we do know that it takes us, and we have to add 22.5 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar NaOH. So we're going to add 22.5 milliliters of 0.1 molar NaOH is what it takes to get to the end point of that titration. All right, so let's go through kind of the steps that I want you to know in order to solve a titration problem. So step one, you can, step one can be drawing it if you want, you can consider that step zero, but the real step one is write an equation, write equation. So you want to write a balanced equation for your reaction. In this case, the reaction is going to be NaOH plus HCl. All right, step two is find moles of something. So find moles of something. It doesn't, in order to, I can't tell you exactly what you're going to find the moles of. In this case, you're going to find the moles of base. And the way that I know that is you can only find moles if you have the volume and you have a concentration. So in this case, I have a volume and a concentration. I can find moles. I cannot find moles of the acid because all I know is the volume. Now, if this problem were a little bit different where we had base in here and we were adding acid to it and we knew how much acid we were adding, then we would find moles of the acid. But in this case, we're going to find moles of the base. 
I just like to say find moles of something, right? And that something is going to be whatever you have both a volume and a concentration of. Okay, and then you're going to step three is going to be convert moles to moles. So basically, once you figure out how many moles of something you have, you're going to do a mole to mole conversion to figure out the moles of something else. So whatever you don't know, that's what you're going to find the number of moles of. And then the last step is going to be figure it out, which doesn't really tell you a whole lot. But once you get to that last step, there's going to be one more um, conversion or one more problem solving thing that you have to do. And it completely depends on what is going to be asked. In this case, it asks for molarity, right? And whenever it asks for molarity, that basically means we want to have moles per liter. So in this case, once we figure out how many moles, in order to figure out the molarity, we're going to have to divide by the liters in order to get to molarity. Okay, so all of that being said, let's solve this particular problem. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and write out my equation up here. We're going to say it's HCl plus NaOH, right? So acid plus the base. Remember, in this one, we're going to take the H plus, and it's going to go to the OH minus to form water, plus a salt. In this case, the salt is going to be NaCl. Now, for this one, there's no coefficients needed. Everything is balanced as is. You always need to make sure that your equation down here is balanced. That's very important because if you don't balance your equation, you're going to get, to, you're going to get the wrong answer. Okay, And you'll see there's a couple um, problems at the end of the chapter that you can practice like this that, where you would have to um, balance an equation. Okay, so next... We wrote a balanced equation. Check. Next up, find moles of something. Well, like I said, whenever we were going over it, um, we're going to find the moles of this one up here. Okay, 22.5 milliliters of 0.1 molar NaOH. We know we can find moles because we have a volume and a concentration. Remember that um, molarity is moles per liter, so we could also um, think of this one as... 0 0.100 moles per liter, which is going to be a conversion, right? So now if we convert our milliliters here to liters, then we can multiply the two to get to moles, which is exactly what we're going to need to do. So let's do it this way. We're going to take 22.5 milliliters of NaOH, and we're going to convert that to liters because that's what our conversion factor here is in. So we know that there's 1,000 milliliters per one liter. And then we also know that we have, um, let's go ahead and cancel out the units as we go. Milliliters go away. Um, and then the next part of this is going to be calculating moles. And we know that we have 0 0.100 moles of NaOH per liter. And again, liters cancels. And what you'll get whenever you calculate this is an answer that is 0.00225 moles of NaOH. All right, that tells us how many moles of NaOH we have. So that's kind of part two here of our problem solving thing. So find moles of something. We've done that. Next step is to convert moles to moles. So we're going to come over here. 0 0.00225 moles of NaOH. We know we have moles of NaOH and we can convert that to moles of HCl. Right? Because that's what we want to find out. So we want to do a mole to mole conversion. Sodium hydroxide to HCl. We come up here to our balanced equation. The coefficients are 1 and 1. So in this case, we're really not multiplying by anything, but still an important step to do because it changes our units to get to moles of HCl. So now we're going to have 0 0.00225 moles of HCl. Okay. 
So now we have moles of HCl. Well, now we have to figure it out, right? That's the last part. So we want to know the molarity of an HCl solution. So how do we figure out molarity? Well, molarity, capital M is molarity, is moles per liter. Well, we know how many moles we have. We have it right here. We also know that we have a 25 milliliter sample. So we're going to go ahead and convert milliliters to liters. 25.0 milliliters times 1,000 milliliters per one liter. That's going to give us 0 0.025 liters once those cancel out. So now our molarity is going to be 0 0.0225 moles of HCl divided by 0 0.025 liters is equal to 0 0.0900 molar HCl. And again, I did three significant figures because all the numbers up here had three significant figures. So 0 0.0900 molar HCl, that would be the molarity of your solution. So all of your titration problems are going to follow the same format over here. The final steps might be a little bit different. The balanced equation could be a little bit um, different or trickier. But in general, it's going to be that same type of process to solve the problem.